Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to go over how to handle missing or incomplete data and how to do that in how to do that in Power Query, different strategies you can take. So in this example, I've got products, units sold, unit prices, and salesperson. And so I've got missing values all over the place here. And so first thing I'm going to do is load this data into Power Query. On the data tab, I'm going to click the option to select from table or range. Leave that my table has headers checked off and hit OK. And now once I've loaded into Power Query, I can start with analyzing my data and cleaning it up. Because obviously one part, uh, one of the challenging parts with that data analysis is making sure your data is clean before you're doing any calculations, any sort of analysis on it. It's always helpful to have a clean data set. Now the ideal approach when you're dealing with uh, incomplete data is just to filter out any blank or null values. And to do that, it's really simple in Power Query. What you could do is just select on any one of these dropdowns and just like a filter in, in Excel, you can just uncheck where you don't want. So I don't want the null values. Hit OK. Repeat that process here. Do the same thing for here. And the same thing for salesperson. And just like that, I filtered out any null values. So any rows that contain null values, they're gone. So the, the good thing about that is my data is now complete. I don't have any missing values. But at the same time, you know, I've I've removed some some data points. I've removed um, some data that you know is effectively going to be excluded from any from calculations that I may do. So potentially that may not be an optimal solution either. But in terms of if you want to do analysis and, and cleaning up, this would obviously the, be the potentially best case scenario because all of your data is accurate. It's it's complete. Everything's filled in. But you know you you're you don't have effectively everything because you've excluded anything with gaps in it. So um, pros and cons of filtering them. But obviously that's a really easy way to do it. Another thing you could do is replace values. So here for, let's say, the product field, I've got some null values. I can select the column and click on Replace Values. And this works just like a, a normal Find and Replace function in, in Excel. So I can uh, enter the value on a Find, in this case, a null value. And I can replace it with, let's say, Product Not Found. Just to make it clear that it wasn't found and it's easy taken care of, right? So now I can see that, okay, I don't know what the product is, but you know maybe that's not such a horrible thing as far as data analysis goes, because I still can um, do my computations on that. Now, the more, more tricky situation is when we're looking at numerical values, like units sold. So if I were to replace values here, let's say I replace the null values with a zero value. If I hit okay, now the problem is, you know, I've put in zero values. So if I were to load this data into Excel, and let's say I wanted to do any calculations on it, such as calculating an average, that zero is going to bring that average down. Because obviously units sold, that should be a value greater than one. So if I just put a value of zero in there, that's going to skew that data bring and bring it down. Because if, if in Excel, I just left that as a null value, left it as blank, then Excel would ignore that that value when it's doing a calculation such as an average or, or a maximum or a minimum. It's going to ignore that because it's blank. So it's not going to interpret that as having any any value in there. So especially when it comes to averages, you know, putting in just the zero is, is great as far as you're, you know, you're getting rid of the blank, but you're replacing it with data that you probably know is wrong because especially in the case of units sold, it, it probably shouldn't be a zero. So it's it's not the not the greatest option um, for units. So now, if if you had a better idea of what that number should be, perhaps maybe that makes sense. If you know that let's say on average is a value of five, six, whatever the case may be, then you could do something like that. But doing just a, a standard find and replace and replacing it with zero or just a, a random number can can affect your calculations. So it, it gets rid of the gaps, but you know, at the cost of having potentially now incorrect data. You're now you're having all your rows, but now some of your values may be incorrect. So again, another trade-off to consider. 
Now, let's remove this. And now let's say we wanted to um, fill in the values a different way. So we don't want to put zeros. We just don't want to do a blanket replace all values with zeros. Instead, what we can do is on the transform tab, there's an option to fill up or fill down. And so how this works is it's basically just going to copy data from the, the, the value next to it. So if you pay attention to this value here between the 12 and the 7, it's got a null value. So if I were to fill down, then it's going to copy from above. It's going to copy this 12 into that null value. So if I fill down, it fills that in with the value from above, makes it a 12. I'm going to X that out. And now if I fill up, it's going to fill the 7 into here. So it's sort of copying from down and filling it up. So if we copy up, it's got a 7. So as you can see, just by selecting fill up or fill down, you know, that can have a drastically different impact on the value that goes in here. It could be a 12 or it could be a 7, right? So it, it could be a big difference in terms of your calculations, which again, it could affect your averages. So it, it depends on how your data is structured. You know, if if your orders are in uh, in a certain order, like descending or ascending order, then using the fill option could work, especially let's say if you're talking about a field like salesperson where you might expect to have all of Bob's orders in one place or all of Alice's orders in one place, then using a fill up or fill down might make some sense because you're just filling in the gaps. If you have a reasonably good idea to expect that, okay, these orders are probably gonna relate to this person, especially if we've got in a certain structure where first we've got the orders for Bob, then we've got Alice, Charlie, and so on and so forth. So in some cases, the fill up or fill down could, could be useful um, in that regard, but in terms of numerical values, you know, maybe not, maybe not as, uh, as useful in that case. Um, so what you may want to consider is using a combination approach when, when filling in your, your values. In some cases, you know, doing a, a find and replace, replacing values with, let's say product not found, maybe that works for the product field for the salesperson, maybe using fill up or fill down makes sense. If, especially if the data is in, um, ascending or descending order. Right. And when you look at numerical values, um, you know, you may may just want to keep them blank for the sake of uh, making sure that you don't throw off your calculations by just putting in a zero or filling in from above or below. So, you know, it's going to be a judgment call based on what you think makes sense and uh, that works best for your for your for your data set. And of course, you could just filter out any values entirely. You can say, OK, if, if we don't know the unit price. There's no sense in estimating, um, you know, what our what our what our total sales were. So in that case, you know, we can just filter out the null values. So there's a number of different approaches you can take, and obviously it's going to be uh, dependent on, on your data set and what you're trying to do and how your data is structured. So those, that's just an overview of some of the different ways you can you can clean up and handle missing and incomplete data in Power Query. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please let, leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on Power Query and Excel. Thanks for watching.